In this lesson, we're picking up where we left off in the last lesson, where we're starting to create our martini glass. And I taught you a little bit about gradients. And basically, um, we've chosen a linear gradient. But keep in mind, you can choose separate values for the border, which is what that's all we've done in this case, is we've been modif we changed the border color or the stroke to a gradient, but not the fill. The fill is still um, is still that um, axiomatic design we put here. So if I want to um, if I want to change that so that the fill is also looking like it's shiny with glass, what I'm going to do is first of all I am going to change the value. Um, of the border for this section to 16, 26, 61, that particular color. So now if I go up here and change this to solid and then put 16, 26, 61, actually now that I'm thinking about it, nope, I am going to leave it as a linear gradient. But now I'm going to select. Um, now I'm going to select the fill, and we're going to make some changes. So we could change it to black. But in this case, what I'm going to do is use a linear gradient for it also, and it defaults to the last selection we put, which was exactly what I wanted, fading from 1626 to 61. Now. Let's see how that looks. Click out here for a second. Now we're seeing that perhaps it would have been better to make the border without the gradient. So let's hit Control Z to bring this back up. And so I had it right in the beginning when I was thinking of changing this from um, a linear gradient back to a solid. So I'm going to change this to 16, 26, 61, which was that bluish color, like so. All right. Now we could click back here if we want it. And you notice that even within the icon, you can use the color dropper to select something. But in this case, what I'm going to do is click outside. I'm going to go back to our linear gradient like so. Now I want to explain a little bit more about gradients in this section because basically these little movers, these determine how quickly you want it to fade from one color to another. So you could spread these apart and you see how long of a fade it is, which can be more realistic in many cases. But if you have it too close, it's like a very quick fade. See, it quickly fades from this to that. And that may not be the effect that you want. So I think in this case, if we want it to look somewhat shiny, that if we did it like so, maybe a little bit, we can kind of watch our canvas here to see how it looks. Maybe a little bit closer, like so. Now we can also, we're not limited to just these three fades. You see how it has a plus sign there? If I click anywhere else except on the actual uh, faders that are positioned here, I can create a new fader based upon whatever the color is in the section that I'm clicking. Like so. That created a dark fader again with those values, 16, 26, 61. If I clicked near the white one, it chose the exact value of that gradient. In other words, it, I clicked in a section right before white. So you notice it's a little bit darker than white. So then we could move that around. So you could fade between multiple colors. You can also drag this fader over here if we want it. Um, basically, 
you can make as many fades as you want, like so. And you can change the value of your fades. So we could change it to, um, you know, a different type of blue. You know, or here, again, a different type of blue. So you're fading between a lot of different colors, um, which can produce a desired effect. Also, seeing how I've switched to the blue over there, like so. And I'm going to move the black one over here, and then move the blue one over here. Ah, and see, I accidentally created another one by not clicking directly on it. So, another thing is how do you delete these, right? Let's say you created one you didn't want to. Well, if you um, hold down control and then click one, it's gone. So, if you want to delete one, that's how to do it. All right, in this case, Let's move these around a little bit more. Like so. And now we can get a little bit of a preview. It kind of kind of looks like an interesting little fade in between there, doesn't it? And now, what we're going to do is once you've once you've selected these values of your fill, which is we've chosen this gradient that we've done, as well as black for our border. Now, whatever we draw with is going to be defaulted to whatever these are we've already chosen. So, what we can do is let's click outside the box. We can create the stand now for the glass. So, let's choose the brush. So, now, if we click here and pull down, it automatically helps you create, oh, you know what, my mistake. The brush tool is not the one to use for this particular section. We are going to use the line tool. So, we click and pull down, and you notice how it snaps to certain sections, so you don't have to worry about making sure you got it just perfectly straight. It'll snap to a perfectly straight spot if you get it close. So then we release. Now we notice that um, that was such a small line that um, we aren't even able to see the gradient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo. And now I'm going to choose a different gradient for our stand. So, I'm going to go back to linear gradient, but this time I'm going to delete some of these other ones. See the little scissors that appear over top? That means you're deleting the gradients. So that's a little more simple of a gradient, where it just fades from the dark blue to light and then back to dark. Now let's experiment with that and see if that looks good. Pull down and release. And I'm going to make uh, the border basically hairline. So I'm going to control Z and now, pull down, and it's still not quite the color I want, so I'm going to click here, um, let's see what color we want, let's do a gray, oh, I chose black, whoops, gray. Now, for, the, for this, I'm going to go back to color, the color swatch, and I am going to change the border also to that linear gradient that I had before, like so. 
Now let's try drawing, try drawing a line, but a thicker one. Let's pick a Ah, see, there we go. Now we, you see that when you draw with that line, that the gradient is applied to wherever you draw. So, let's control Z. I think that needs to be a little bit smaller, though, like so. Now I'm going to click here at the bottom of the glass. I'm going to pull down. And now you notice that it looks like a pipe because we had the gradient go from a darker to a light back to a darker. So I'm going to make this look like a more futuristic glass, like so. Pull down. All right. Now it looks like there's pipes at the bottom of the glass. And if I wanted to adjust them further, I could Could grab them, move them around a little bit, but I think I think they look pretty good actually. So let's leave them. And they, what's nice is it snaps too. So we've created now our glass, um, a small gradient down here, and then our part of our, the base of our glass. So in the next lesson, we'll finish up and create the very bottom.